Move the check. Yep. Can you, I can't hear you. You got it, Michelle? Michelle? Yes. 
Good evening, everyone. Hi, Christine.
Good evening, everybody. Uh, let's start the meeting. Friday night, I appreciate you coming. <clears throat> States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I wish to announce that the 48 hour notice is required under the Open Public Meetings Act was emailed to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast Star, and the New Coast Star on December the 16th of 2021. The copy has been placed on the bulletin board in the borough office, and the copy has been filed with the borough clerk. Mr. Bunnell? Here. Mr. Gubitosi? Here. Mr. Sexton? Here. Mr. Weber? Here. Mayor Fox? Here. Uh, okay, we'll uh, go to the Let's begin by the public comments on the agenda. Uh, five minute limit. And <laughs> comments on the agenda. Uh, Thomas J. Coman, 612 3rd Avenue. Um, I was wondering, I'm happy Mr. Menino's here. Um, I was wondering about the uh, line item for the library it was reduced from 562,531. Uh, I thought that was statutorily established. How can we now reduce it? It's based on the assessments, is it not? Uh, yeah, so when we first did the budget, it was based on the preliminary tax certificate. Once the tax collector struck the actual assessments after they did their adjustments, and they had the final tax extended tax duplicate, the state has adjusted. So we had a preliminary numbers when we first did the budget. Now we have final numbers because they finished their work. The assessors, the county, and the municipality. So we updated it based on their final numbers. Okay. Um, new construction, things like that. that occurred. Right. Okay. So, but I'm shocked that there was a reduction because we added so many. I not an assessor, so I don't okay. know. Okay. I, I totally understand. Um, then the. Uh, I was also concerned about uh, the, just these line items for the beach utility, um, the general revenues, the surplus to the general budget was 50,000, now it's 251. Um, so that money's going from the beach utility to the general budget? The uh, current fund. To the current fund. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's not a surplus to the beach, that's money you're sending to the current fund. Yes, to reimburse current fund for prior expenses that they do. Okay, now on these prior expenses, have we established that we're pretty much done with this, or is this? It's a one-year catch-up, and that's it. It's a one-year catch-up, so you provided all of it to the state. Yep. But we also are not done with the assessment, even though it's a one-year done number. There is a possibility that there was more that should have been allocated, but we will cut it at the end. So there's not there's not going to be another clawback next year where we say, oh, we're going to take the money. We're done. That, yeah, if that's your question. That's my question. Yeah. I just don't want sure. this to be repetitive Understood. every year. So at some point, we have to say, we're going to call and it, not. and we're sure. putting the line, and that's it. So. Uh, and I did want to say, it looks like the um, there's a difference in the tax, the taxable amount by like 116000 Is that correct? Yeah, so through the adjustments that we had, um, we had the change in taxes, certain tax cuts that we had to make, certain mm -hmm. revenues that we had to decrease, that was all asked by the state for us to do. So, okay. from those adjustments that the state had, we made those adjustments. And then, so that, that's going to result in an additional $116,000 to be generated from taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And so One that's... thing to keep in mind, too, um, that is also in here that was a result of yesterday. At about three o'clock, um, local finance notice 2022 13 came out mm -hmm. that increased the amount of state aid municipalities are getting from the state federal um, municipal relief fund aid. Mm -hmm. That was part of that 75 million that Governor Murphy put in the budget to go mm -hmm. back to municipalities. So that 18,533 um, that's on there, that's an amount that came directly to the municipality, but directly offset of taxes. 
Great. And then in this uh, resolution, the, there's no additional monies being taken from the beach or the sewer fund with the exception of the clawbacks that previously mentioned. Is that true? Okay, great. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Any other comments? Okay. Zoom. Uh, sorry. Zoom. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, are there any comments from Zoom on the agenda? Okay, um, we'll now go into resolution 2022 the budget <laughs> amendment resolution. Uh, we'll start with um, Anthony. You want to? Go through it and then uh, in Colorado. Where is the local municipal budget for the year 2022 was approved on the 22nd day of March 2022? And where is the public hearing on said budget has been held as advertised? And where is it is the desire to amend said approved budget? Now, therefore, we are by the council, the borough of Bradley, Beach County, and Mount the following amendments to the approved budget of 2022. Total surplus anticipated, 1,045,000 to 988,556.25. Fees and permits, 55,000 to 65,000. Anticipated utility operating surplus beach operating, 50,000 to 51,000. Anticipated utility operating surplus sewer operating, 50,000 to 200,000. Municipal relief fund aid, 0 to 8,533. Uh, reserve for public works generator, general capital, 57,061.920. Reserve for public works diesel tank, general capital, 13,020. Reserve for surveillance system, general capital, 494.1120. Reserve for public works roof repairs, general capital, 3 to 0. Reserve for recreation building, general capital, 20,096.37 Reserve for Sylvan Lake, aerator general capital, $1,009 and one penny. Reserve for interlocal agreement, salt tone general capital, $1,231. Reserve for preliminary costs, solar tunnels, general capital, $500 to zero. Reserve for library accessibility, general capital, $4,500. Reserve for acquisition of police SUV, general capital, $5,660 to zero. Reserve for Sylvan Lake Improvements, General Capital, 50,000 to zero. General Capital, $10, 150,000 to 160,000. Amounts to be raised by taxes for support of the municipal budget, local tax for municipal services, <coughs> including reserve for uncollected taxes, 7,098,190.15, Minimum library tax, 562,025.23, 521,720.69. General administration salary and wages, 207,500 to 167,500. Mayor and council other expenses, 22,000 to 19,000. Municipal clerk salary and wages, 1,000 to 86,000. Municipal clerk other expenses, 73,000 to 63,000. Human resources salary and wages, 45,000 to 20,000. Financial administration treasurer, <coughs> salaries and wages, 165,000 to uh, 105,000 to 55,000. Tax assessment administration salary and wages 29,000 to 35,000. Legal services, other expenses 100,000 to 250,000. Enforcement officer salary and wages 149,000 to 126,000. Enforcement officer, other expenses 36,450 to 30,450. Insurance employee group insurance 825,000 to 940,000. Insurance liability insurance 170,000 to 320,000. Stormwater maintenance, other expenses 75,500. 50, Municipal court salary and wages 69,200 to 50,000. Road repair maintenance salary and wages 415,000 to 395,000. Buildings and ground salary and wages 415,000 to 395,000. Recreation salary and wages 133,200 to 93,200. Tourism salary and wages 41,000 to 31,000. Tourism other expenses 30,000 to 20,000. Change free commission other expenses 30,000 to 25,000. Construction official salary and wages 187,000 to 182,000. 
contingent other expenses, 50,000 to 5,000. Public employee retirement system, 89,880 to 185,880. Police and fire and retirement system, 518,933 to 608,933. Maintenance of free public library, 562,025,122 to 531,769,169. Uh, capital outlay, police vehicles, 0 to 50,000. Uh, reserve for unplugged taxes, 275,563,46 to 275,418,22. Operating surplus anticipated, uh, 381,987,127 to 518,836,31. Reserve for roof repair sewer capital, 100,000 to zero. Reserve for video inspection of sewer line sewer capital, 25,000 to zero. Reserve for public works generator sewer capital, 24,000 to zero. Reserve for sewer infrastructure upgrade sewer capital, 37,349 to zero. Other expenses, 576,700 to 411,700. Public employee retirement system, 100,000 to 65,000. Surplus general budget, 50,000 to 200,000. Each utility operating surplus anticipated 485,862.24 to 435,862.24. Reserve for public works generator, each capital 13,000 to zero. Each fund, each capital fund balance 25,000 to 38,000. General appropriations, other expenses 453,000 to 353,000. Public employee retirement system 75,000 to 14,000. Police and Firemen's Retirement System, 125000 to 35000 Surplus General Budget, 50000 to 251000 Be your further resolve that two certified copies of this resolution be filed forthwith in the Office of the Director of the Division of Local Government Services for his or her, not really her right now, certification of the local municipal budget as amended. Be it further resolved that this complete amendment and according to the meeting of NJSA 484-9 be published in the Park Press on the issue of July 9, 2022, and they said publication. Contain notice of introduction on said amendment to be held at the meeting of the report, 701 Main Street, Resolution 30, 07730 on July 8, 2022, at 6 o'clock uh, p.m. Okay, uh, we'll now put this comments and then uh, I guess both at that point. So, good resolution. Uh, let's start. Um, <clears throat> after our initial council introduction, uh, which was voted down, uh, I'm sorry, which was uh, had a few miscues since uh, March 22nd, uh, we didn't have a uh, introduction uh, amendment meeting. Last Tuesday, the 28th, which was the uh, budget was voted down. Uh, I'm not going to quote verbatim, but uh, I'll just do it. I'll just get close. Uh, uh, recall Councilman Pinellas' reason for the no vote was the sewer utility surplus transfer to the current fund. Uh, Councilman Weber's comment was that if we moved $100,000 in transfers, this vote would be a slam dunk. And Council will do with Tosi, I guess, wrote on Tuesday, count the two fifty thousand surplus appropriations and that will move from the sewer and beach utility budget, which I think we sent a, an update out very shortly after that. Um, my comments last week, as it related to the current budget and the surplus, uh, were of a concern, uh, and they remain a concern. Uh, I detailed some of those concerns last week, uh, and actually they're becoming more of a concern. Uh, our current fund surplus balance in 2020 was uh, $2,964,000. 2021 was $3,004,000. Uh, we're projecting it at the end of 22 to be around $2 million, maybe a hair less, which is about a third reduction in that surplus. Uh, usually for us in the current fund, the held reserve which is prior year budget money not spent, that if you don't spend it in 12 months, it falls into the surplus. We've been pretty fortunate to get a half million dollar to a billion dollar drop into our surpluses. Uh, that number this year is probably going to be $100,000 uh, based on the, uh, some data we looked at over the last few days. Um, 
I mentioned last week risk factors, um, and uh, we do have payouts uh, that we are going to have to deal with this year and next year. So uh, not only next year, um, you know, again, that could be uh, a hit to our surplus. Uh, we hope that we can get funding and uh, we probably have to bond this outflow pipe. We are right about to make a decision on, uh, we've actually made a decision, now we have to just uh, go to a resolution on the uh, engineers working on that the initial analysis. <coughs> Completed that with that on last week, but um, I'm sorry. That's about three and a half million dollars, um, million dollars um, that we were initially estimating, uh, which is not great. Um, uh, we can certainly bond that. We're hoping to get some aid, but there may be some soft cost expenses up front. Uh, and we have this cleanup that we've continued to talk about. Uh, both uh, our business administrator and CFO have been working on it since this. We had a pretty formal review of it in May with this council. Uh, we actually stopped using the uh, financial services company a few weeks ago uh, with some funding. Uh, we'll resume that once we uh, pass the budget and then we'll hopefully complete that and get that behind us and get our processes in order. Um, and then there's the uncertainty that we currently have. Uh, when we did this budget, we were not forecasting $5 a gallon gas, uh, we were forecasting two and a half dollars gas. Uh, gas prices are coming down, which is great, but um, you know, we're gonna. <clears throat> so um, there's just, there, there are just a couple of reasons why last week I said, I really didn't want to go into this uh, current fund surplus. Um, so we did leave the two fifty thousand dollars amounts in the utilities surplus. Um, but we did not take the 100,000 out of this. Uh, hence, we do have an increase in the tax levy. That troubles me. It only troubles me when we have an increase in the tax levy, but we always have an increase in the tax levy. I don't know if we've ever had a year in this town uh, where we haven't had an increase in the tax levy. Um, I've heard uh, members of the council uh, saying this is political on my part. It's not. Um, I think I have a strong rationale. I made the decision on the best collective interest of the town. Uh, it's been a tough, tough kind of conversation relative to that. Um, in the last two years, as promised, our spending level increase has been brought down. In 20, 2019 and 2020, our average total spend for this community that affected our tax level which would now $689,000. Uh, 2021 and 2022 has averaged $279,000. That's all in, that's everything. That's, the, that's our tax, anything that was into our levy. So we've been able to reduce that 60%. Uh, you know, the, the example was just brought up about the library being down, certainly helped us, but we, we, it's not only appreciation and tax rate, it's, how do you control your spending and make prudent decisions? That's what we're trying to do. So our tax rate is coming down 10.7%. Uh, and that's a combination of um, spend management and also home appreciation. Um, we are funding some level of capability improvements. Uh, we are funding the library at school increases of about $200,000. The total increase is $388,000 all in. So 200 out of 388 is school <coughs> and library. Um, and probably as important as anything, um, we're correcting these prior year errors on a number of items, payroll and appropriation expense related mainly. Uh, but, you know, they, they, there will be more to come on that in the coming uh, months as we get this finally squared away. Um, as I said before, we introduced this budget on March 22nd. Uh, the CFO and business administrator did a comprehensive two and a half hour presentation to the public. Uh, we, we all collectively voted five nothing uh, for this budget. In that budget, uh, that budget was actually much higher than the current budget that we're, we're introducing right now. Um, so it's, it's, it's uh, certainly uh, from a tax standpoint, we're in a, in a better place than we were on uh, March 22nd. But uh, I would actually prefer to have the March 22nd number 
because I think we got some capability that gave us uh, that would improve our community. So uh, that uh, that certainly concerns me. Um, you know, there has been some dogmatism um, around this budget process. And to be clear, I want to define what that means. Dogmatism is defined as individuals who lay down principles as incontrovertible truths. Um, last Wednesday through Friday, the VA, the CFO, council president, and I really labored over this issue. Um, at the end of the day, I made the decision um, to compromise and take out the surpluses. Um, it concerned me about the headwinds that we have in front of us. Uh, I don't want to mortgage 23 uh, to 2023, uh, given some of this uncertainty. Um, I could not bring myself to make a short term decision uh, that could affect our health. health. That is a principle. I'm not going to make short term decisions that will impact us long term. Uh, just the last couple of comments. Uh, I have tried to drive affordability as a key theme over the last few years. Uh, as I said before, our average budget increase uh, all in has been the level of spend has been reduced by 60%. Um, on leadership, I really believe we've got two consummate professionals in place that have helped us with these financial processes, Ms. Humphrey and uh, Mr. Nino. And I appreciate all the work they've done on this. They've worked diligently over the last six to eight months to get ourselves compliant and work as effectively and efficiently as possible. Uh, I have every confidence that we're going to make great progress the second half of the year to get this squared away. Let's hope we continue to move forward uh, and that our 22 budget, budget, which is, I think, reasonably accurate, it's achievable, and it's reasonable, although it is laden with some risk, uh, we can pass. So I would urge the council to uh, pass this introduction. I, I really do believe it's the right thing to do. And uh, I'll stop there and uh, I guess start with uh, Chancellor Lynette. Uh, Ms. Fair, are we voting or asking questions? Ms. I had a couple questions to see about. You never asked the council if they had questions and I asked them questions. Sure, go right ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Mr. Benito, just um, looking at the, the numbers in the resolution, there's just a couple that look differently than I've seen recently and it will be explained. Um, one is uh, actually the amount of taxes raised. I'm fairly certain that the from number has changed, am I correct? It was closer to uh, 7 million and 40,000, perhaps about 7 million and 80,000. From column, I never touch. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the same as the one that was introduced on March 28th, uh, March 22nd. I did not bring my last version with me, but I know because I've done this calculation about 20 times that we were increasing taxes, municipal taxes, 0.6%. And the adjustment to the two was pretty close to $100,000 bringing it to a 2% increase from a 0.6. So I agree with you, the firm shouldn't change, but I am very certain it did. I can double check right now. If, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Just, if, if it did change it, you know, I'd like to just understand what would have caused that. So looking at the adopt uh, the introduced budget that was posted on the website on March 23rd, it was 7,098,190.15. Okay. Okay. And I could also check the one that was filed on FAST on March 23rd. Do you by any chance have access to the email that the, the mayor just forwarded to us a few days ago with the, the four attachments? Um, you, you were copying it. Right, in one of those files, I, I reached out. Um, there was a wrong file. It had it had a form a formula. Yeah, formula. Already have the proper formula. 
So the 7,098 was the original that was introduced on March 22nd. Um, the other uh, question. Um, the, the amounts in the uh, sewer utility and the beach utility, uh, you identify line items for um, purse for the uh, sewer, 65,000, not that. And you identify uh, purse and PFRS amounts in the, in the beach. I guess my question is I know that the total surplus amounts also include health insurance and, and joint insurance, mm -hmm. but you didn't identify this as separate line items, is there just no need to? So those are included in the other expense line <clears> in the state budget. Okay. So, so you don't break them out separate. No, nah, the state doesn't ask us oh. to. Those lines are pre-labeled on the state's budget. So we use the ones that are pre-labeled that they have. I have also, um, I had a couple of questions just based on the mayor's uh, opening comments. Um, he mentioned that based on data you guys have looked at over the last couple of days, <laughs> last few days, that's what he said. You're projecting surplus to drop a million dollars. Has that been shared with the rest of the council? I I, I'm, I wasn't aware of that. Does anyone know what? Uh, so that was factoring in, uh, I guess, a couple of days ago, it was mentioned about 750,000 compensated assets time. Um, that's going to have to be paid out to those two individuals. Well, well in one year, you're saying? So that's going to be cut over. Well, you can talk about the contract. Um, um, can, um, I don't can, can actually know because I'm having labor attorney here, so I'm not actually sure, but it's a contract that the administration prior to the current administration has signed off on, so they're aware of the contract. So, again, I'm not trying to, yeah. So, for, based on our internal contracts that are already set up, it looks like it would be paid out over three years. So, how do we just roughly how are we losing a million dollars of surplus in your projections? We would need to allocate it out in a separate liability line in one year. So if, if we accrue the liability right now, we have to record the liability, even though we'd be paying it out every year, we still need to record the fact that we have the liability. Okay, okay. A hundred thousand so is a hundred thousand each year. And that's just a number that I'm throwing out right a hundred thousand or twenty thousand. You have to report you have to carry that uh, liability each year that you carry the debt. Okay, because of other emails, too, the council has received we've heard that there's kind of cash flow concerns, considerations, shortages. That's not addressing that? No, apparently not, right. No. Because that's what I thought. Yeah, it's just not addressing that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Um, okay. 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 So the two are really, the two are not related. Um, the one, the, uh, the accumulated assets payouts, that's a fund, that's a fund balance problem. Um, right now, our current fund bank account has about $300,000. Um, you're about to approve a bill list next week that has across all of the funds, 300 and about $50,000. Um, now that's cut across all the funds, but $200,000 of that alone is your current fund. So pretty much now what we're doing at this point is we're taking money from other funds in order to pay the money from the current one. So we're taking money out of general capital in order to pay the bills for the current one because that's a fund that has cash. So we're basically at this point cannibalizing our other accounts in order to pay from our current fund account. Okay. We are also, there's just been a, uh, I guess the one other handful of questions I want to ask all tied back to the mayor's comments. Like just to make sure I'm looking at the right data. The mayor also said our average spend increase over the last couple of years has been 279000 Correct. Now, I answer that question. Okay, great. And what I'm trying to understand, and again, maybe I'm just looking at the wrong data, Mr. Mayor, but I'm, I'm under the impression that our budget increase is... $820,000. My, what am I not comparing correctly? I'm, I'm looking at the tax, uh, summary of tax rates. I'm looking at that schedule and looking at the amount of tax increase that we give, we've had for our uh, residents. So, so I, mean, yes. I, I think I might be able to just jump in for a tad bit. We have discussed this in different sessions where, um, 
there was a misunderstanding in what a part-time to a full-time employee is um, privileged to. A part-time employee, if they're working over a certain amount of hours, they are entitled to the same amount of benefits as a full-time employee. We have not um, given that privilege to certain part-time employees, and we actually owe them money. In doing so, we also have misappropriated or um, we, we, we did a budget correctly. The bottom line is we did a budget correctly. If you have a certain amount of workers that need to work and a certain amount of things that need to be done, we didn't budget, budget it correctly because we were actually paying people um, straight time instead of time and a half. If you take that into a certain amount of people that need to be paid, not only do we owe them money, but in the current year budget, we have to do the right thing by those people. And I'm not going to pay people in the inappropriate fashion. I don't have that, like I know it's wrong. So if I have someone that's working and they go over that certain amount of time of 40 hours a week, they need to get time and a half in that straight time. That is where a number comes in. And that's where it's many times prior when we were prior to the budget and in the introduction of the budget that I explained that I'm not actually sure where this number is. We rightfully have to go back three years to employees to see what we have done wrong. Being the fact that we have not appropriately appropriated the expenditure of these, these employees, we have to go back and try to figure it out. It's not that easy when you, when you find this stuff in the middle of December of the year that you're doing the budget for the next year. Um, that is stuff that we uncovered in the middle of December. It's not very, I just, I think. We're and it, and yeah. public might not understand or agree. They might not understand where I'm coming from. But, and, and I truly hope that you can understand where we're coming at with the amount of employees that might have to be done right. And the fact that we even had to reduce the amount of staff. Yeah, got it. Okay. But I think I understand everything you said, but I think Councilman Buffet's question was the increase. I'm looking at the That's an increase. <coughs> no, no, no. Let, let me finish. Because I, I think he had, I, I think the question that he specifically had was the the levy increase for the four years, the, the tax levy increase. In, in 2019 it was four hundred and ninety-nine thousand yeah. dollars, just the tax levy. In 2020 it was eight hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars. 2021 was $169,000, 2022 was 388. Yeah. I'm averaging those two and saying in 19 and 20 it was $689,000. 2021, 22 is $279,000. Right. So that's, I think that was your question. That was, and, and Mr. Mayor, as a confirmation, um, are you again looking at the entire tax levy, not just the mass tax I'm looking at the entire tax levy. Okay. Because that's what people write checks for. On the uh, on the basis of what we can control, which is the municipal tax levy, mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll, I'll give a shout out to prior administrations. So for the most part, tell them our, tax, our municipal tax is flat for a number of years. And last year was basically a break even. This year, it's up one hundred thirty. But you have to remember that your contracts that you signed for us for collective bargaining agreements have been up to three percent for those departments. Yep. No, so to hold the tax levy at that level, I just want to explain, right, yeah. that you're decreasing your O and E expenses to your yeah. salary and you're, salary and wage. Cutting into your capability. Yeah. So right. now we're cutting, 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 and there comes a point when you yeah. cut to a certain extent that now, what, like, what do we do? Do we cut services? Do we cut supplies? What do we do? Yeah. And we, that's where we ran into the problem with the yeah. recycling issue. Yeah. Do we cut people's hours or do we? How do we how do we navigate this? Yep. No, I understand your point. Absolutely. No, I and mean, it shouldn't be a panacea. You know, I, I've heard a few people say that they've seen postings that uh, you know taxes should go up. But the reality is taxes go up. The question is, can we control that as effectively as we can? I think we've done a pretty good job in the last few years. I'm certainly worried about next year. I'm worried about the following year because we do have new contracts coming up. Number one. And two, uh, the headwinds that I mentioned, I hope none of them come to pass, but if they do, uh, it'll be a problem for our, uh, for our taxes. So the taxes, we all want taxes to go down. 
staying flat is the next best thing. But nobody wants the taxes to go up. So we'll all agree. But Mr. Mayor, we agree. Or we agree. Well, no, a practical. Yeah, yeah, and I, well, a lot of things happen, but a practical reality is definitely taxes. You know, they're going to happen. And in most municipalities, uh, I would I would venture to guess that uh, we're not unlike others that we have increases. My point is try to manage it as effectively as we can. Agreed. I, I'm simply trying to make a statement that I can't say can get to. We all want taxes to go down. The next best thing is taxes to stay flat. And final and finally, you can minimize the amount of the increase in order. That's all I'm saying. When you, Mr. Mayor, when you meant reference spend earlier, I was thinking of in terms of the entire budget, not just the tax plan. And the entire budget, my understanding is, maybe the CFO can confirm, is going up about 8%. So it's it's a substantial increase in the entire budget, the appropriations and the anticipated and all revenues, anticipated and not anticipated. So we're not necessarily now granted. There are salary increases, uh, Ms. Humphrey, as you mentioned, that are negotiated. And the half time of the time and a half that wasn't appropriated for, right? Yes. yes. So, it, which is a large function because we are a beach town. So, the entire beach budget was not paid correctly in the prior year budget. Yes. But I just want to, I just want to make sure when the mayor was sharing information, I wasn't fully thinking, I wasn't sure <clears throat> following it. Now I do. I just want to make sure that our residents also understand that our total budget is going up eight percent. Our total tax levy, as the mayor looks at it, is at thirty cents, going up a couple percent. Our local is two percent. Our total is two point two percent. Okay. And finally, the local is two. Started out just a week or so ago at uh, at about half, but it started off in March much higher than that. It started off as much as six percent, uh, March eighth. Yep. Uh, so uh, I, don't, I don't think we had this on March eighth. I think we had it on March midnight. Was Mr. Mignogna's presentation? Twenty second. The PowerPoint. Twenty second. Now that was the introduction. Yes. The workshop was on. Oh, the workshop. The PowerPoint presentation was March eighth. Yeah. It was six percent municipal tax increase, and I guess what I what. I want to make sure the residents understand is um, beyond what Mr. Menino has already clarified is that um, our current local municipal tax increase is going to increase 2% with this vote. Um, we had the, the administration did finally remove the $250,000 amount. So just want to call that out. Mr. Cohen, I guess, mentioned that in his comments. Um, Took out fifty thousand that was going to come from the beach surplus. Took out fifty thousand that was going to come from the sewer utility <laughs> surplus. Uh, I I do thank the administration for finally making those moves. I guess my biggest concern was these were requested moves for a long period of time, for in excess of a month. So I'm happy that we got to this point today. Uh, I'm not sure that we needed a two percent tax. Levy increase, uh, dollar amount increase, not percentage. Um, but again, because my numbers are a little bit different than the numbers I, uh, I reviewed before the meeting, this is only a modest increase now for Mr. Menino. Um, and Mr. Menino, I guess my last question is Was any consideration given? I see that we actually reduced the uh, surplus anticipated in the current month, right? From the 1,045,000. Yeah, but during our budget cuts that we had from March 22nd to here, um, since we were cutting expenses, we cut the surplus anticipated in response to the offset. Because if we change something on appropriation, we have to change something on the. Right. So uh, could you have just a question, just academic question? Could we have that $56,000 reduction in the that was relative to the introduced budget? We reduced. Anticipated surplus fifty six thousand dollars. Could we have left the anticipated surplus where it was and reduced taxes fifty six thousand? Not fully, since we're using the American Rescue Plan money in the budget as revenue replacement. 
the federal treasury limits us to reducing our taxes that much. The federal treasury did not intend for the American rest of plan money to be used to offset taxes. So we weren't able to reduce taxes that much with it. Uh, and that's why the <coughs> federal treasury. So. Federal money was in the, in the initial budget. So could we have left the initial budget where it was? Or you're saying there's something in the we could have, I mean, we could have left the initial budget where it was in the introduced version. Just um, it surplus. We could have, but then once we had the budget comes, we had to cut the revenue side somewhere. So we couldn't cut the taxes, we had to cut other revenue. And I guess that's the question. Why couldn't I just want to make sure I understand it and the residents understand? Why couldn't we cut the taxes? Because of the federal treasury regulations, with since we were utilizing the army. What could could we have cut them at all? Or you're saying this is the minimum, the maximum? So they said that we can't have a um, any kind of decrease as far as what they had. So we were already at the bottom of what they had. So, so just to put that in numbers. For taxes, we were at 7 million 098. Mm -hmm. And we've increased that, whatever it is, 30,000, 20,000 dollars. That 20,000 increase, was that the minimum we were, or the maximum? Because we, we already have a rate decrease. That's why. A rate decrease, right. So but tax dollar increase could not have been helpful. That's my question. Because of the rate decrease now. Okay. Okay. Never mind. That's that's fine. Thank you, Councilman. Do you have any questions? Um, no, I don't have any questions. Um, I do have a quick comment. Uh, I went through the documents that Anthony sent out this week, and in a comprehensive summary, there are 100 line items that have allocations that exceed last year's spending amount by 50% or better. Some are two, three, four, 800, 2,000, 3,000% more. You want to take that? Uh, I think we could have found what we need very easily to have held past where it is. But since we are back up against the wall now, um, we will get past this time. Say. Yeah, can so you just make a comment? Because I, um, I think this is something that we talked about. We actually before. didn't speak about line item by line item, Randy, and I, I would be more than happy to go over it. So, what happens is um, your prior budgets, um, uh, please know I'm speaking for the public, but I talked to Randy as well. Um, so, what happens is when your appropriate appropriations aren't set up, um, maybe in the fashion that it should be through the flexible chart of accounts for the state. Um, what we have said in the past is that how we're going to rebuild the budget. Um, there are certain departments and line items that weren't charged correctly. So let's just imagine that you have six bowls out on the table, three bowls of those charges, that's where everything was put into and those three bowls were left with empty. That we, we, we went through, we went through every employee and we tried to go through most of the expenditures and appropriate appropriate them in the right expenditure column. So where you see expenditures that have increased and you're increasing that line item in this current year budget, if you look, there's probably going to be an offset to another budget item or a department because they just, we, for, for instance, um, sanitation. I believe that in your 2021 budget, it was $3,500 that was allocated to appropriate salary and wage for sanitation workers, $3,500. If you imagine in your mind about the sanitation workers that are coming out and picking up your garbage for as many hours as it is in a week time, in a year time, it wasn't the appropriate amount. So then we had to reallocate a new, new department. No, I, right? I saw those. Yeah. The one that, the one that so, really stuck out for me was OEM. Right. So that had, wasn't actually correct as well. They had $377 posted to two salaries. Right. And it wasn't. I think it was like 8,500 posted to overtime. So what there happened? Are, I'm not saying there. No, are, no, no. Listen, I, I'm not saying there aren't some line items of those hundred. I'm with you. That are that. that right. So what happened item. was it. It's just so hard to explain because it's like, so you have this budget. And when you go into the, our financial system, you have to charge a line item. There's like this num there's like this 
201-251600-00095 number, right? Yep. And this is the account number that you charge. And if that doesn't exist and that doesn't have money, what happened in the past was these other accounts were charged. Yep. And it might not even be the right account number. It I might know. not have even been you the same. You guys have done a great job fixing so, so, you know, all So it's like very hard. It was very hard for us to take a look and say, oh, that should have been here. Because there was, that didn't exist. What we looked at was just bulks of amounts charged to a certain account number. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, where does this, where does this happen? I know. Right, and it was like mid-December. You have usually I have a budget done about by mid-December, and you're like, oh goodness, I have to create a base for the next year. Where do I start that from? Mm -hmm. And so I absolutely appreciate what you said. I agree, but we just didn't have that strong base. I truly believe if we go forward with a budget at this point or at any point in the year and we allocate and appropriate the same thing. And people might say, what's an appropriation? Like, what does that mean? <coughs> Every appropriation in, 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 in the municipal government, right, your expenditure, which is an appropriation, has to have a revenue source. They have to offset and they have to be equal at any time. We're not a for-profit agency. So they all, they, we all have, we have to have an offset. So if I'm gonna charge something, I have to have that area where it's allowed. And I see where it's coming from. And that's where our budget comes from. And so unfortunately, right now, even um, is Miss Meadow here? I see her name. So where, where you see a line item where it says office supplies for a meeting, if that budget didn't have that item, I can't even charge it. I don't have that mechanism. So hopefully we have that base at, at this point, mm -hmm. which is so hard to explain, which it, Probably just like babble, but no, get you it. get it. Like, yeah, you I do get want it. to make one correction. You mentioned that at any point, revenue should equal appropriations. Yes, that's oh, not actually true. Um, there is a time where your revenues won't equal your appropriations, primarily if you pass an emergency, um, which the governing body passed in 2020 when they did the 115,000 special emergency for Corona relief. Um, so when that emergency right. was passed, you essentially borrow from future years. You this year recently canceled Cancel. that uh, appropriate uh, <laughs> that emergency. So that's one time. That's more depth than what I was going, but yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. Correct. Alex, you have any questions? I, I don't have any questions. I just think this is a good compromise budget that addressed the, everything we've asked for at the bottom. Thank Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, going back to May 20th, you know, a majority of the council asked that you know, hundred thousand dollars that was getting transferred from utilities to the current fund, we asked that those transfers not be made. And initially that request wasn't honored. So the last time we were here, we voted down budget amendment introduction. Now, to his credit, the mayor took those transfers out of the budget, but that money has to be made up somewhere. So we thought, at least I thought, that money was going to be made up through surplus. And just never in a million years would I thought that we're going to make this up by taxing people more. Uh, but that's what this introduction does. They're making it up by taxing people more. I think we're doing that when we have ample surplus. Um, I have another name for surplus. It's called money that we taxed you on in prior years. That's what surplus is. Um, it's not a surprise to say the tough times are coming. Right, There's a lot of people are going to struggle in the coming years. So, in my opinion, at a time like this, when we're just trying to make up a hundred thousand dollars in our budget, it would be better to use surplus, meaning money that we taxed you on when things were a little bit better, rather than to tax people more when we know think times are going to get tough on people. Um, so that's why this still concerns me. I mean, you know, in, on on paper, in a way, the mayor did what we asked, but I never would have imagined it would have. Uh, come from taxes, so that's that. I know there's headwinds coming and all that stuff. All the more reason, don't make it harder on people by taxing them more. Um, finally, I, I feel like the, the process here is part, part of the problem um, where, you know, we ask for a change, the administration makes a change, they send it to the state, they get the okay from the state, but then the council is not even, the rest of the council has never seen it. 
So I just feel a better process would be like starting with the entire council, having everybody see everything, have everybody look at it, have everybody agree it. Then we could send it to the state. And then we could all sit here and know what's going on and know that we're all going to vote yes. Um, but by sending it to the state first, before everybody gets to see and give their input on it, then we sit here and we actually don't know what's going to happen. So, and that's essentially that was when we moved down last time. I don't think that would have happened if we had seen all the information first. So, um, I feel like the process is part of the problem. And that's all I'm going to say about the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Question. We can absolutely address the process in the forthcoming year um, for next year for the budget process. I actually, we, I usually will start asking the CFO for an analysis in October. By November, we begin to get our good numbers to where transfer, transfers have to happen. In the form of government, it's, it's more or less lies in the form of your government. So if we want to come up with a method that is different, I would bring it to the mayor and ask that for the next year that we have a different method or process. But the process that we went through this year is the correct process per your form of government, which I'm sure the um, council can um, well, there was plenty of time to, there was plenty of time to fix the process this year. I mean, well, that's where that. your communication between the five of you should come into place. Mm -hmm. It's not just one. It's not two, three, four. It's all five of you. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, for the professionals here working on the budget, we're we're at a really tough we're at a tough spot right now. And I appreciate what you say. I absolutely have spoken to you about it, and I don't have an issue with it at all. Just, just to give an example, we had we had a cancel budget meeting in late June because the meeting was set. They didn't run the the you know are you guys available? Like that would have been a really great like let's just check on people's availability. Yeah, that, that's how we actually did the job. I understand, but I'm just I'm just letting not, the people know. The people don't know that, so I'm just letting them. Know. Yeah. So well, just think that's what I mean about part of the process. Yeah. If we go back every second but first, I think we not have any surprise. Did we not do that for this meeting? We well, do that for this and, and and please know as council and please know as the public, like we are in a different focal here right now. As I said before, we did not come across these issues until I did bring um, Anthony in and the financial um, his audit company to uncover certain issues that happened in mid December. As I said, in October and November is when I set up that budget and get a good idea of what's happening. We're in mid January where we have realized that something is a break here. So I have to say to the councils, um, you know, please know this isn't the way that the process usually works. I think I've said it before at other meetings, but um, this isn't the way I operate. It's not the way that a budget usually operates. But as we uncovered more and more, it just went like each week that went on, it just became that more and more came uncovered that we had to address and see. So that that what that did was that tweaked the timeline even of how many things happened, how there were different workshops and such. And and I hope that the process does change, but unfortunately, as I said, this year um, it's almost like we're 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 starting over. And hopefully, this is right. And in October of this year, we can start addressing and looking at different things that we might need to change. Okay, I uh, I'll make a motion to. I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'll make a motion to. Uh, um, hand up. There's a oh, hand up in. Oh no. We'll do comments right that's, here. I think that's actually announced. Usually it's a little yellow hand in the. We'll, okay, I want to make a motion to approve resolution 2022-186 budget number resolution. Second. Mr. Bennell? Yes. Mr. Gubitozzi? I referenced in our last meeting that this was a outrageously horribly flawed budget process. Councilman Weber has just touched the tip of the iceberg. I went literally two months asking questions without getting answers. I had to personally call the DCA a number of times. I had our mayor write 
and contact residents telling them that Councilman Bubatosi was going to be responsible for a large increase that was coming in our taxes. I only found out about that because the residents contacted me and said, what are you doing, Councilman Bubatosi? As it turns out, you've seen that we don't have a large increase in our taxes. Uh, and certainly, it was not anticipated at that point in time. I, I did literally go two months asking questions. I had this documented without getting the answers to my questions. One of the most significant questions was, why are salaries and wages increasing $700,000? I never was given an answer. However, on May 20th, we did meet with the CFO, and at, one, at that meeting, we were reviewing the budget amendment at that time. And Anthony shared with me that, oh, we reduced salaries and wages from 700,000 approximately to about 400,000. We reduced salaries and wages $301,000. And I said, great, how did you do that? And the answer was working with Kim, they, they cut back on planned new hires. Am I, am I misrepresenting that? I just want to make sure I'm saying it. That was a portion of it. There was planned new hires, like, the mayor said capacity and then also correction of prior errors. So, so through this fairly lengthy process that was pulling teeth for us to get answers, the one thing I have said from the beginning was I wanted to manage taxes effectively for the residents. Um, I resent, I don't care who you are, I don't care if it's my spouse, I resent anyone who says I have any motive other than to do what's right for, for our residents. Um, I do think we are at a much better place than we've been, but it was painful getting here. Uh, I, I don't think, I don't understand the full math, Mr. Menino. It would be nice if someone could have explained it to the rest of the council uh, why we had to increase taxes, why we had to decrease uh, anticipated surplus. And my final comment to the residents here and on Zoom is, it was so bad, this process was so bad, that a little while back, I reached out to an attorney and I said, I can't get answers to my questions. I'm a council member here. Is there a way that I, I can sue the borough on behalf of the council to get, to compel the administration to answer my questions? And the attorney said, no, you cannot compel the administration to collaborate with you. All you can do as a council member is vote no. So for that reason, I am voting no. Uh, Mr. Sexta? Yes. Mr. Weber? No. Mayor Fox? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I'll vote yes. And uh, I just, I, I don't want to get into a uh, back and forth, but uh, I would suggest that uh, I've been here for two budget cycles and uh, the amount of review time, the amount of questions that were answered, the amount of information that was passed, I would say was three times the amount of last year. Uh, so uh, people have different opinions of things. Clearly, Councilman Lutos and I don't agree on this point. Uh, and all we can do is move forward and improve from this point. Okay, uh, we'll now go to the uh, public comments, uh, number seven, uh, five minute limit, and uh, same with Yes. Thank you, Mr. Uh, came to me as a little surprise. I'm sure you've heard on the news about municipalities uh, not in compliance with. Uh, unused sick time, vacation time, or whatever. I know you mentioned that uh, you have two big payouts coming. Um, where do we stand here as our municipality uh, in regards uh, to that? Since uh, sometimes these payouts are... Yeah. Thank I'll, you. I'll let Kim answer, but I, I can tell you that the law changed in 2010. And that was changed by uh, it was Governor Christie at the time. Prior to 2010, any payouts that have been accumulated prior to that are in place. So that's one of the reasons some of our payouts are, are large, but I'm gonna let Kim answer. So, um, 
you're, you are. But well, we are in compliance. So that's why. Okay. Good. So we are we are complying in the best means possible. So what happens is we have existing collective bargaining agreements that have been signed off and passed by council or administration. Uh, they exist until they end. So until they end and are renegotiated, they exist. So if we currently have um, ex um, in a, a liability to a contract that will exist until the end of the contract and what is renegotiated. And as we all know, negotiation means that you have, there is a trade-off. So I can't say that it's gonna be a, you know, a, a trade-off that there will be no liability to the borrower because that's not also fair to the employee as well. Um, these laws are changing. I've actually been part of the state council audit um, in prior places that I worked and did employ. So I'm fully aware of the um, items that the state council is looking at and the change. So when I do negotiations, they're always addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> Sorry for the roundabout way. Um, Alan Rapp, 512 North Avenue. I just wanted to address um, a couple of things. And um, please don't take this as accusatory, Kim, because it's, some of it's going to come your direction. Don't mean it that way because you really haven't been here, here long enough for, for this to be uh, all you. However, Mr. Mayor, the idea of surplus that you are referring to, I have to side with uh, Councilman Weber. If you budget correctly, the fall over of what your extra budget should not be with the budget size we have five or six hundred thousand dollars. We should be closer again to, to Councilman Weber's point. You are taking the money from us, the taxpayer, and you, you're a taxpayer as well. Absolutely. And 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 none of us should forget that, that everybody up there is a taxpayer. And that the idea is to be as close as you possibly can there without hurting the borough in case of an unforeseen problem. And the idea of, of having three, four, five million dollars in surplus, I have to disagree that you need your auditor to be able to turn back and say, a budget this size with the things that are going on, here's the number that's appropriate because they see eight, 10, 12 municipalities. We only see the borough of Bradley Beach. So I, I, I don't, you know, I, I can't tell you that I'm an authority to tell you what your number should be, but to comment that it was three million, you know, uh, two or three years ago, and it went down to two million, and then it went to one million, we still haven't gone bankrupt. So there must be a number somewhere in there that is safe to get to, and I'm hoping that our new CFO can get us there. Uh, our CFO is aware of that number. You can probably comment on it. Whenever he's ready, you could jump in. I'll yield my no, little bit of time there. If you'd like to jump in, because yeah. I see you're kind of holding there. And, you know, but my other point, Kim, and again, I, and, and I respect the job that you do, somewhere, someone is hired as a part-time employee with a set amount of hours and responsibility. Okay. Right. So being the BA, everybody below you, needs to understand they must monitor their employees that are part-time and say, stop, you cannot work another hour because you're putting the borough of Bradley Beach at risk. Correct. Don't you say. Done. Correct. And I need to hear, Mr. Mayor, since the way this form of government, I that you have directed RBA to tell everybody, stop. Yes. 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 Because that is crucial, and I truly understand the fact that, yes, no one should work and not get paid. No one should work and not get the benefits that they're entitled to. They cannot. Well, it's right? a, we, let's face it, we're a state, you're part of the state. You will get, you pay holy hell from the state if they catch you. Yep. Can I? Can please, I? please, yeah. please. So just uh, absolutely on the same page, you 100%. So what happens is when a payroll is submitted and we go through the different records, you have to remember, I came in in July and July came in for going through different, a lot of different things. And you take a look at what's going on. What happens is if somebody works a certain amount of hours, you cannot say, oh, you shouldn't have worked those hours. I'm not paying you. 
not federally allowed, right? Absolutely. So what happens is I have to now say, okay, you work these amount of hours. I have to compensate you correctly. And I am going to have to go back and ensure that you were compensated correctly. Going forward, you can't do this or you will be disciplined. That is how the mechanism works for administration. And that's pretty And that, yeah, right. And so now if it happens again, they get disciplined. What is that di discipline? That's where the mayor and I sit and meet with uh, council and say, what, what's the discipline measure and how does this happen? Um, I'm quite strict. I'm sure um, I don't have any department heads here tonight. Um, I don't tolerate. I don't tolerate too much, but at the same time, I have to be quite cautious. Department heads don't listen right now because I know you're at each town, and I know you have to function, and I know things have to be clean. I know they have to be right. So if I'm pulling back on certain time and certain duties, and there's a whole other side of it as well. But when I'm pulling back that time and those duties that are expected, I have to make sure that this is being, this is happening. So sometimes I have to allow this overtime to get this done. So to, to that point, I'm sorry, to, to yeah. that point, um, I, I don't want to sound uh, smug or arrogant, but this is not our first year being the borough of Bradley Beach. I'm, and I know that except for you, Ms. Menino, maybe Erica. Um, everybody's been here a very long time. And these functions have gone on and on and, and on, on and on even a little bit more, longer than any of these gentlemen have sat up here. So these department heads, I gotta really figure, they know what it takes to, to, get, to get this job done. And instead of maybe holding that part-time over, maybe they should go back to Mayor Fox and yourself and say, you know what, I need another part-time so I don't get into this jam. I absolutely agree with you. And I have published on the website, I published in the front office for work. I can't get it right now. Pretty tall. <laughs> uh, I am more than, I would love to welcome somebody at the wage that I want to pay mm -hmm. instead of the wage of time and a half. I, 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 truly, I, I truly agree with you. And, and I appreciate it. I just, you know, I, I want to bring it out into the public because, you know, I'm taxpayer like well, everybody sitting here and we all want to make sure that. So I agree with you. And, and what, what's odd is like, so you have your council meetings. This is, this is the mayor's meeting and then the council's meeting. This isn't Kim's meeting. So I can't even tell everyone how I would love to operate things and administrate and how, how things should run. It's not my meeting. It's not my time. Um, the mayor, I've asked the mayor to have um, a time where there's actually public workshops where I get to talk with the public. Being that if you look in your administrative code in your form of government, there are certain departments that just directly fall under me. I would love to explain to people how I see things fit. Um, I know that there are certain people here that I've spoken to privately. Um, I want to talk to everyone. I want them to understand because sometimes when it seems just so one weed and so one lane that's really not actually the way it happens and sometimes their hands are just tied and it does take time unfortunately there is that red tape of government right you know, and i'm sure you understand that. no no I, I truly do I, I did this for 12 years I, a little I, bit I, different form of government but you know mr mayor i think i think the ba is makes makes a very good point here and i think that after we've all now sat here through three months of a laborious very public very, I'm going to say the word ugly, budget. And I've sat through many, many, many budgets. Um, and I've never seen anything quite this bad. Even when in, in our towns, we were Republican and Democrats and we fought, but we always came together with a negotiation and got there. We made it on time with some band-aids and stitches. But I think we need some healing. I really do think we need some healing here. And perhaps having one of those where the borough administration would talk about what things should go on and make people understand what goes on. And then really maybe have an open session with all of you guys so that we can maybe heal a little bit because this was really ugly, honestly. Thank you much, appreciate your comment. Can I actually, I want to talk about the fund balance that you mentioned. Sure, please. Um, so you mentioned that an auditor would look at like 10 to 11 municipalities. Mm -hmm. um, with similar type of budgets. I'm sorry? Similar type of budgets. Yes, so I, I'm not just the CFO here. Um, so I work for a public accounting firm. 
where we do audits in Middlesex County, Monmouth County, Ocean County, Burlington County, all over. My accounting firm does about 80 municipal audits um, every year. So through those audits, I've done about around 100 municipal budgets that I worked on with different towns um, all over in Monmouth, Ocean County, not even preparing them, but I've also reviewed them. For the most part, in every town that I usually do, there's always a formal fund balance policy put in place. Whenever I have a bond reading call where I talk to standard fours, Moody's, where we go through that process, um, we're issuing debt. One of the questions I always get from every rating agency is, what's your formal fund balance policy that's written down in a book, in a manual? Is there a percent that you never want to go over, you never want to go below? Is there a percent of your budget? How long, if you just had to use just your fund balance, could you operate? Those are questions that I always get, and I usually have answers for them. Um, now, I don't believe there's an actual formal fund balance policy no, that's put in place on record. Is there is not. Once this budget is completed, I think a good process would be, now, I don't recommend that Brad and each ever again goes through the process of issuing their own debt, just going through the Monmouth County Improvement Authority, so that way we never have to incur those funds. But we still need a formal fund balance and policy, so that way we can manage and maintain the fund balance that you're talking about. With that, I just to go back to that a second, I'm sorry, I take a little bit more time. Would that also include bands and pans that you would go through the uh, through mama? Um, we don't do that in Bergen. Tans, you, know, is, no, tans, you can't. No. But bands, um, you can. You said Bergen. Yeah. Do you have a mom, uh, Well, do you have a Bergen County Improvement Authority up there? We do, but we like the bar. The, the, it's not mom, though. Well, yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> so if you don't have an improvement authority right. established, then you are able to go to another county improvement authority. Right. Well, we do that for purchasing. You already yeah. have. Right. Um, so to answer your question, you can do bans. If you have a bond anticipation note, you can fund that into right. Could you explain financing. to the public what a bond anticipation note does and why people right. do it? Oh, this is so um, fun. Go, yeah. go in. I'm sorry. I, 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 I did 12, I did 12 <laughs> budgets and I can I could do this blindfold. Yep. Um, a bond anticipation note is a form of temporary financing. <clears throat> so a bond anticipation note cannot go above uh, 12 months. It's not a calendar year, 12 fiscal months. So a bond anticipation note could go from July to June. It can go from um, March to January. It just can't exceed 12 months. A bond anticipation note can also just go three months. It can go six months. Could you explain anyway. what the reason why you issue them? So I would issue a bond anticipation note, temporary financing, because it's a one, it's up to a one-year note. So maybe I'm thinking in my head that, you know what, interest rates, I have a feeling my financial advisor is telling me that, you know what, interest rates are about to go down, I have a feeling. Hold on, do temporary financing. And then in six months, when rates are lower, you hit and you strike that lower interest rate and you get a better rate, you pay less interest, and that's when you lock in those high, uh, those low rates for the next 30, 20, whatever useful life the project has. Can you the just, other reason I would do bond anticipation notes is maybe I have staggered uh, debt. Maybe I have some debt that's maturing in April, some debt that's maturing in August, some debt that's maturing in December. I hate having to pay debt payments all over the place all over the year. Maybe I want to just do a three-month note, stretch out that bond anticipation note so that way all of my debt is going to come due on the same date and I can just structure it around the same time of the year. So it's really also about consolidating your debt into one note where you only have to worry about one bond, uh, serial bond that you have to pay off. Last thing you need to explain to everybody is that all start thinking of this is arbitrage, but what public agencies cannot do. So arbitrage is specifically important that when you issue debt, you're not really supposed to be, it's not a money maker. You can't have the debt sitting in your account knowing well that, oh yeah, I got $50 million in the bank now, I'm gonna gain all this interest, I'm gonna bring it over my current fund, and I'm gonna bank a bunch of revenue. So financial advisors are always careful to tell you that whatever premium that you're receiving, you better budget that in the next year, that way you don't gain interest on that. The next thing you know, hey, you have to file a tax return. Exactly. Because governments do not file tax returns, we're not required to, but the second that the IRS finds out that we have arbitrage, we're gaining interest and money on our debt issuance, they're going to call up and say, hey, you have to now file a tax return and give us a bunch of money. Do so, you want to go over TAN? Okay. Because you did bring up TAN. Okay. You're going to be a whole evening for you. You're right, Alan. Sorry. But this is our thing. <laughs> so, uh, Thanks. One, I hope Erica got all that. I mean, uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
As Anthony was going through that, I thought of a Robert De Niro movie with Billy Crystal. Oh, oh no! And I, I just want to say to you, Anthony, you, you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions? Comments? Yes. That was a good thing. Uh, I, don't yeah. I don't know. I'm Italian. Robert Tanner's Italian. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thomas J. Cohen, 612 Third Avenue, and, and I want to congratulate you for passing the budget, the budget in July. Um, but that leads me to my next question, Mayor. You referenced that uh, there were EPA glitches on the first two submissions. Could you be more elaborate with what those glitches were? I didn't say the EPA glitches. Well, what were the glitches? I just said there were some uh, miscues. Well, okay, is it, could you be more elaborate as to what they were? Okay. Uh, that's what got us here. Uh, so. I'll give you one, $115,000 that wasn't uh, recognized as part of the recovery. Okay. That was one of the major um, okay. items that came out. Um, okay. The borough did an ordinance, a fresh a resolution. Um, you want to take that? Sure. <laughs> 2020, uh, December 2020. Um, the governing body passed a resolution authorizing a special emergency. Uh, in 2020, at the end of the year, municipalities started getting real cautious because they weren't collecting the revenues they were supposed to get. So the state allowed municipalities to pass a resolution, essentially grossing up their revenues for 2020, so that way they didn't suffer their fund balance numbers. So in that resolution where they uh, did the emergency, it essentially, you essentially borrow from your future budgets in order to realize revenue for 2020. Um, I think it was three years, but in 2022 was the first year that we would have to start to put in our budget and pay down for that 115 that we essentially borrowed from our future selves. So this year, when the state looked at our budget, they said, uh, you have to put a 115,000 in this budget. And we all were like, why do have to put 115? <laughs> Primarily because in 2020, that special emergency that was classified was never recorded in our financial systems. Um, whoever was here is the state never reported it. Um, the auditor in 2020 never reported it. The audit report at the end of the year. So they we never knew about it. In the annual financial statements of 21, it was never recorded. The only place it was ever recorded was in the archive books of the resolutions that were passed at the end of 2020. But the state had a copy because it's required to send them a copy. Um, so once the state said that, we went to them and said, well, we never recorded it. <coughs> We never utilize it in any of our budgets. Are we still required to do this? And they told us that in order to not have to budget the 115,000, you would have to pass a resolution canceling it out. So first we had to go through the process of passing a resolution, canceling it out, getting the approval through that, sending it to the state, and then approving it. So that took a little bit. That, that was one of the glitches. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I just want to say that, you know, this keeping taxes flat, someone said previous administrations, they've taken the money from the sewer and the, they did not keep our taxes flat. They used the surplus money over and over. I've stood at this podium over and over and saying, you're taking money for the wrong purpose. So uh, I'd just like to strike that statement that they did not do a good job. They took money from that. Also, this statement about 10.7%, uh, uh, the tax rate was lowered, okay? <laughs> The assessments have gone up over $150 million. It should be low. It should even be lower than this. And people are still going to get a high tax bill because the assessment is going to be on the county tax. It's going to be on your tax. And they're getting this big hit off the assessment. I believe the assessments are accurate. But again, we have to watch the dollars because every line item should be reviewed over and over again. More specifically, we used to come in here and we get a list of 800 line items and we looked at them and that's how we did it in Nazwa when I was council. We questioned, we brought the, the directors in from each department, went over each line item specifically. What can you do? What can you spend? How'd it go? The public was, was there, it was on a Saturday. That's how everyone will know what's happening. But, but I do want to congratulate you for getting this done and not pilfering the money again from from the uh, the sewer, which which is really where it's needed. You have so many deposits to go on these next three or four phases, and we don't want to be scrambling for money. 
Mr. Menino, also in your letter today that you sent, it references the 750 letter thousand. Yeah, there's a letter that was right here on the chair. Oh, I was going to yeah. copy your letter. Um, so, so we, we know that Captain Zul is retiring. Who's the other person retiring? I'll go a little bit back further. So what happens is in budgeting, you should have something set up in trust fund as a dedication by writer for accumulated um, absences in the trust fund. Unfortunately, the borough administration has never set that up in the past. I'm not sure exactly how you funded it in the past, but in our world, what we do is we take appropriations that might not have been spent for whatever reasons that they're not, and we move them over to a trust fund at the end of the year. You'll see that transfer happen at the end of each year, which I'm sure you have happened in the town that you were previously sure. in. And you find your accumulated absences through that, um, through that fund. Um, in your audit report every year, you do give an accumulated absence liability. Um, unfortunately, the borough has never funded that liability, and you—it is your it, it is our liability to fund that that that, that amount, um, and that is the amount that, at any moment in time today, people are going to ask for. Ms. Humphrey, is that how they kept taxes level by not funding that fund? I can't answer for prior <laughs> administration. Oh, yeah. I have to tell you, this has been an interesting budget process to come across. All I'll say is that the usual process is that the accumulated absences trust, if you have money approved, uh -huh. would be funded by an appropriation in the current fund budget on the outside cap of your budget. So okay, outside the cap. But that being said, the, the March 22nd meeting, you <coughs> weren't aware of this 750 at that time. This is just a new the thing. Is coming from smaller. In yeah. this letter now? They haven't uh, put mm -hmm. in any kind of retirement data yes. or signified okay. that they were doing. So right. I'm not sure if everyone realizes when your PERS, PFRS, if you put it for your retirement, you can actually put it in for your retirement. We have to be ready to pay that liability out. We you can pull back your retirement as well. So we just have to be ready. But yeah. in the beginning of the year, before we went started really going through the budget, yeah. we did do a dedication by a writer establishing the accumulated absences trust. Um, I had only been here for a few months. I guess Kim kind of had some kind of inclination that certain people were going to start doing it based on having the time recruited in the pension system. So that that dedication by rider that was done before we really started the budget, mm -hmm. that was kind of the kickoff of us kind of thinking uh, something might be coming. We don't really know, but we had a feeling so. So you didn't use the 750 number in your first calculations in March, did you? This is just not really Okay. Thank you. Also, just so you, just so you're aware, I what, what my inclination is is that they think that the prior thought was that oh we have this much in surplus so we can go ahead and pay it out when it's due. That's not the proper. Way. I agree. Thank you. Any comments? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Oh, no uh, so there there so oh there's like so there <laughs> oh Zoom. I'm sorry. I can create a Zoom. Is there okay. anybody else in the audience that? Yeah, oh, there's on. one other. Mm -hmm. I, yep. I thought we were. Okay, Zoom. We'll get to you in one minute, okay? Next Zoom. Maybe next week we'll do Zoom first. Tom, um, got yeah. 414 4th Avenue, Gravity Beach. Um, I just had two quick questions. One to Mr. Menino and the <coughs> administrator. I think Mr. Weber brought up a really interesting point, saying that the revenue surplus is something he feels we've been overcharged over time. Mm -hmm. I'd like to prefer to think that the town was efficient in what they did and was able to save money for us. So my same question would go to the two utilities. If there are revenue surpluses in those two utilities, how is it not something we have overcharged for and couldn't then, for the reasons you were looking at, move the thousand be used for that cost? I'm not entirely sure. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. I know. Um, this was a stump Anthony question, yeah. sorry. <laughs> my question is, as Mr. Weber brought up, that the revenue surplus is something we were overtaxed for in his mind. I'd like to think we were efficient in what we use those revenue left over at the end of the year. Why does that not also apply to the utilities of the sewer and the beach that we have revenue surplus there we've overcharged for? So if the town did that and needed this 100,000 as the conversation was going, we weren't able to draw that back saying we overcharged and there's a need for it now. So the one thing to keep in mind, um, 
the surplus that's sitting out there or fund balance that we have at the end of the year. Um, the question we need to start asking ourselves is how is that surplus generated? It's not just tax. There's also the fees and permits uh, come in and have the garbage uh, construction permits. That construction permits. Um, we have the code and the plumbing, so all that kind of stuff. The other thing is the MERN, miscellaneous revenue not anticipated. Um, so if you're in the GIF, you get a dividend payment from your GIF company. Mm -hmm. That money comes in, that goes into black balance. 30,000. So we sell a piece about, of equipment or something like exactly. that. Exactly. So thinking that any fund balance that we have was generated essentially from the taxpayers, um, it was revenue that they brought in, That, but there's other things that came in that's not really tax related mm -hmm. um, that we kind of get that we weren't really anticipating or expecting. Um, so... That answers that portion. What was the other question? Going utilities about the utilities where surplus. we have revenue surplus. Utility surplus. Right. So it's it's that's essentially the same thing. There's other things that go into that. Um, connection fees that we have, um, meter uh, replacements that come in. So there's other things that go into the surplus in there also that we have that we have to factor in. Um, debt issuance. If you get a premium on your debt issuance, that comes into your surplus also. <laughs> so it's not just the fees and permits that you charge on people. It's, there's other things that go into it. Um, cancellation of grant, you cancel a grant that the receivable is higher than the appropriation, or the appropriation is higher than the receivable, that goes into fund balance. Um, canceling out reserves that we have, like we're going to do at the end of the year, um, all those reserves that are sitting in capital, we're going to cancel those out and bring those into fund balance. So it's not just we overcharge or overtax. There's other things that go into fund balance. In the audit report, if anyone's, you know, I'm kind of interested in looking at an audit report. <laughs> Um, maybe it's just me that wants to do it on the Friday night. I don't know. Um, but in an audit report, if you were to look at your A1 schedule, your D1 schedule, and your E1 schedule, that shows an analysis of your fund balance. Beginning fund balance, ending fund balance. Everything that increased it, everything that decreased it. And it's itemized. Um, and then you can even trace it back to the back schedule in the audit report, and it basically paints an entire picture of how did I get my fund balance from here to here? And you can trace it all through. Sure. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty complicated to really trace it. Yeah. Um, I've been but it's good to know if you trace it. I've been for 10 years, yeah. it's not that bad. But if you ever want to look and see how your fund balance generates, that's the best and perfect place to look. The other thing I'd like to say, and, and nothing against Mr. Cohen, I'm really glad we have very competent administrators running our town so we don't have to come in on a Saturday and speak to the department heads about how to reduce their budgets. Thank you. Is there anybody on Zoom? I know there are any other questions. Yeah, Actually, I, I, Michelle, can you move your mouse? I think that's a mouse. Like <laughs> Michelle, can you move your mouse? That's, that's no. not. No, it's not, not me. I'm not the one doing the Zoom meeting. Hold on one second. Right. It might be frozen on your end with the Wi-Fi. Just like, who is Wi-Fi? <laughs> Okay. Can you all see it? Shows up at four. Anthony, can you see if anybody has their hand up there? I can't see. No, I don't see it. No, no, no. What happened is it froze on the screen. And it's in the corner. Yeah. It's not in the middle. Oh, of the right. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 It probably froze. So I'll just we'll pause for a moment. Oh, there's somebody moving there. Yeah. Well, the owl's moving. <laughs> no, I saw. No, 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 I was moving. Uh, I think that person. Yeah, yeah person late. Thank you. Can I just say something? Well, what? It's a good thing. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm sorry. Not my meeting. I can't. Or else it's down. Linda Dundee, 312 Brindley Place. Thank you, Kim and Anthony. You did a great job. Hopefully, there's no more issues in the back from prior registrations that we have to address because it's always a pickle. And you did a great job. And I'm glad that all those people that Worked all that time on the team made whole, even though it was probably done a download somehow. Um, and thank you, at the council, for doing a great job. It's not difficult working with people, especially when you're all men. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, can you just okay, give me your name? Let's, uh, make sure you get that thank you. Next. Okay, there's uh, we have any questions? There were there was nothing on Zoom. I just, we just checked. Okay, great. I don't yeah. know where that little hand is coming from, but it's, it's just frozen. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like oh, yeah. it's probably on our laptop. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to make yep, it. That's it. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. You did that the whole time, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs>
That's why you're this the whole time. Fridge. You're looking for an IT consultant? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor? All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good weekend. And, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. What part test? Oh, part test. Yes, please, everybody, come out Sunday. There's some great local bands playing. Great job. Thank you, guys. I used to know.